Hello, this is Brian Smith, I'm a field engineer with the VDOT Asphalt Program. I'm going to be talking in this module about the Materials Information Tracking System and Producer Lab Analysis and Information Details, or the system many of you may have heard of called MITSPLAD. So what is MITSPLAD? MITSPLAD is a centralized online database where we can use the hot mix asphalt, uh, job mixes, sample data, uh, weigh tonnages, and submit all those in one place where it can be viewed by both the department and the producer. So MITS uh, is the VDOT department side and PLAD is the acronym for the producer contractor side. Uh, both can submit, some, submit uh, data as necessary and view data for the appropriate records. So this system helps to share the data. So the purpose of this system, as we said, it helps to share the data between the producer and the department since VDOT is using the producer test results for quality assurance. And it helps save time as time is money for all of us. And we want to get the information uh, to each other as quickly as possible to make decisions. Uh, and the contractor can also see VDOT QA test results as they become available. Uh, and so all this is important to help action be taken as quickly as possible uh, if there is any issue with the asphalt uh, test results. So here's a list of some of the things that the VDOT personnel staff would do, logging into MITS, uh, uh, approving the job mixes, entering the QA test data to share back to the contractor, uh, project information, the way sheets, closing out lots in projects, and then running comparison reports, lot adjustment reports, um, and all those things that'll come into uh, pay adjustment as needed. And on the plaid side, the contractor or producer is going to be submitting the job mixes, submitting the sample data, submitting the test results and tonnage information, and then using this to log in to see the VDOT test results and running a report to export all of their submitted data if necessary. All right, so in this slide here, we see a schematic kind of showing what we've been talking about with the MITS and plaid, uh, VDOT and producer side communicating and sharing the data between the two different sides. Um, and then we also down here show the VDOT users, excuse my poor highlighting. Um, and so those show some different, the role or role levels that the VDOT users can have. Uh, so the QA technician is usually the QA manager. The lab testing personnel would be a senior lab tech or a lab tech. Those roles are pretty similar. Uh, the district materials engineer would be the DME uh, that is responsible for approving all the submissions or job mixes. Uh, usually they would have a designee within the program that would have that approval authority. And then the administrator or central office staff who work with some of the back end as needed. On the producer user side over here, uh, there's also the different role levels. The senior lab tech would be for those use, uh, technicians who have gone through the mixed design and mixed design certified that they'd be able to submit the TL 127s we'll be talking about in a sec. Uh, and those uh, plant lab technicians, plant level two certified that we're getting here, uh, likely would be the lab tech role. Um, and they can submit the test results uh, into PLAD uh, for these lab tests. And then the bonded way person will be talking about the TL 102s. And each producer will have an administrator uh, for that company that will manage all the users. Um, so they might be a good person to contact. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. So in this slide here, we see an image of the website you would go to to log into Plaid. The website shown up here at the top is plaid.vdot.virginia.gov. Uh, so you'll have to bookmark that if you're a frequent user of Plaid. For the VDOT staff, it'll be through the VDOT network connection that you'll get to the MIT side. So that'll be a little bit different website. Uh, and then the user ID and password, you can get that from your company administrator. I want to stress that each user should have their own user ID and password, and that information should not be shared with other users. I know a lot of us working in the labs will be working alongside others at times uh, or different uh, shifts coming in and out, but each user should have their own user ID and password as these should be connected to their role levels, as we just talked about, uh, based on the certifications. So it's very important to keep all of that separate. 
And then here on this page, we have the plaid system. Once you log in, you'll see this notification page, which will show you some of the most recent activity uh, for things that would pertain to your company or your plant. Uh, here we see a lot of TL50s that have been submitted. And on the top, we see a TL127. And then you can navigate clicking up here to HMA program, and it'll drop down some of the other steps you can move on to. All right, and here we are with the uh, job mix form, also known as the uh, TL127 job mix formula. So this uh, would not be that different from a paper form that would be used in the past, but now uh, a lot of the header or the main information is submitted through Plaid uh, for the VDOT users to approve in MITS. Uh, so a lot of the information, the district, the producer, um, ID numbers and all that, uh, fairly straightforward. And then the uh, contractor will enter the weights of the different aggregates and the targets down here uh, to compare to for quality control. All right, so we just talked about the TL127, and here we see some of the requirements that are in specification to use Plaid in MITS to submit some information. So the first thing here is the job mix formula for each mix must be approved through Plaid or submitted through Plaid for VDOT to approve in MITS. Um, also, as you'll know, when you go through the Mix Design Certification School, there's other supporting documentation that's required. And so paper copies of these or electronic PDFs, whatever you can work out with the district, uh, will need to be submitted along with the TL-127 form submitted through Plaid. So just want to make sure everyone knows the TL-127 is not the only thing to submit but it is the uh, plaid record uh, to know that it has been submitted for approval. And for the sample side, the TL50s, we'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, within 24 hours of sampling, contractor shall enter those results into plaid. Um, that is 24 hours from the time the sample is taken. Those results sh sh shall be entered. All right, so we said we'd talk about the TL50. Here is a screenshot of that TL50. Um, so you can see on this tab, the acceptance AC and gradation is the ta main tab uh, for the uh, sieve results and the asphalt content. And then uh, you'll have your test report and you type in your percent, uh, type in the weights and these percent passings will calculate. Uh, I'll note here that as you can see, some of these showed up red. Uh, these are indicating flags, which just mean that this number uh, for the percent passing is outside of the target range for your job mix formula for the eight samples. But of course, this is only for the individual sample. So it doesn't necessarily mean there's any penalty or adjustment point. It just means this is something to, uh, for the, to encourage both the contractor and VDOT to keep track of to make sure that mix comes back in line. Uh, and then now when volumetrics testing is required, you'll see that's on a separate tab up top in the TL50 page. And then again, when you'll enter in some of the information from the test report, some of the other information will calculate. So it'll show you which boxes to put in. Uh, here again, there's a red indicating flag. For volumetrics, this does indicate the volumetrics have failed and there will need to be adjustments made. Um, and a lot of that will have to go through the mixed design certified technician. Um, but that'll be an important thing to keep uh, an eye on when you're submitting these test results. Uh, another thing that gets submitted through Plaid by the contractor is the TL 102. This is the waste summary sheet. Uh, it's always a little tough for me to say. Uh, so the contractor will put in this TL 102 summary of the tonnage used on a project in a shift uh, to submit to VDOT. And so for those of you who've seen these sheets, the summary sheet is the top part is for materials and the bottom part is for construction. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that next slide. And then it's used for all VDOT projects, so even local existent projects. So make sure you know if it's going to be a VDOT related project somehow. Uh, these forms are a little bit difficult to go back and do after the fact, so it's best to know beforehand. And we're going to talk about this in a sec, but the top half is the main part that gets submitted in Plaid. All right, and so here on this slide, we have the TL-102 summary sheet, and we've got an image of it. Uh, some of you may have worked with this in a paper form, but this top part is what we had talked about. We're going to be submitting into Plaid for the contractor's uh, way 
person. And I will note that right here with this user note, the uh, start date and the end date need to be entered and the start time and end time as well. So just be aware of that, if, especially if you're paving overnight, uh, those dates would be different. And then the bottom part we talked about for the construction staff, um, I'd encourage construction uh, BDOT staff or producer staff to discuss at the pre-con how to handle um, coordinating and communicating this information. Uh, some areas may want it done differently. Uh, some BDOT inspectors may have access to MITs, some may not and want the copies delivered the next day. So there's just a diff few different ways that can be handled and just uh, suggest discussing to find out the best way for that specific project. All right, so now we're moving on to control charts. Uh, these are useful tools, so hopefully some of you have seen them. And by spec, they're required for the producer to use. So therefore, it's set into Plaid that the control charts can be viewed for the spec sieves, asphalt content, and volumetric test results. Uh, so these will plot out your test results and compare with standard deviations um, to help evaluate the process tolerance. Uh, warning flags will show in the control chart if you have a sample that is outside two standard deviations from the target or two, uh, three consecutive samples that are one standard deviation out or if 11 straight samples fall on the same side of the job mix that's either above or below the job mix target. So here's an example of what we were talking about with the control chart. Uh, in this example, you can see the blue dots are the uh, sample test results. And the red line down here is the job mix formula target. So in this example, it does look like a lot of these blue numbers are slightly above the job mix formula target. So that might be a case where maybe that target would need a part B and to adjust to be match more what is being observed from the test results. Uh, D2S. So D2S uh, is a property we look for to evaluate whether or not the VDOT and the contractor results are comparing. The D2S is a specified limit from ASTO test methods or historical data that would tell us what in a reasonable range two different labs could test the same material and get the difference in results. Uh, so this is important as we're comparing our split samples from VDOT and contractor. Uh, if we get numbers that are too far apart, they would be a D2S flag, and that would need to be looked into. Uh, so what do I mean when we need to look into a D2S flag? Well, the first thing, and this is what we talked a lot about in the plant one class, is the sampling procedure, making sure that sample is represented of the material and split well. Uh, to know that the two samples that are split are uh, representative of the same material. Uh, the testing procedures and lab test equipment would be the next things to look into, uh, whether or not uh, a piece of equipment is out of calibration or one of our technicians uh, is getting in a hurry and forgetting a part of the step, or maybe the temperature has gotten out of line of where it needs to be for part of the procedure. Those sorts of things can happen and cause a D2S flag. And so note down here is that this D2S investigation will be looking at both the producer and VDOT uh, testing procedure to make sure they're done properly. The quality management report is a tool that can be found in MITS or PLAID. Uh, this can be looked into to get more, to dig into more specifics about some of the test or the mixed data. Um, you'll see down here we talk about a few different levels. So the first one will summarize it on a statewide or district or for the contractor side, their entire contractor operation uh, across the state. And then when you go into a second level, it'll look more at the specific job mix formulas, uh, some key data, and then continuing down, you can look at a third level of test results or control charts. Uh, so this can be helpful to look at sampling rates, numbers of lots, numbers of samples, numbers of flags, um, F and T statistic testing. We won't talk about it here much more, but there's VTM 59 if you wanna look more into the F and T statistics and what those mean. Uh, so here is an example. You can see you get to this QMR report by clicking on the HMA program. Uh, I'm attempting to highlight right here. And then you can see some filter boxes for date, district, year, 
uh, producer. And then right here, these numbers are just showing the sample percentages. Uh, but you, oh, when you enter in the filter information, this will populate more information down here in the lots uh, tab or samples tab that you can look more into. All right, so moving on to uh, the quality manager report, next levels. Uh, as we mentioned, when you go into level two, you can continue to dig in and get more specific information on a mix um, and all these different properties listed here. You can also select individual listings to access a specific individual test result and look for more details. And then level three can take you to a control chart. Uh, comparison reports, these are available through MITS to the VDOT staff. The match comparison report will compare the split samples and the non match comparison report will look at the producers uh, non split samples and evaluate them. Uh, again, as we talked about before, VDOT is using the producer data for acceptance. So making sure VDOT and the producer data compare well is an important step. So these comparison reports help to do that. And then notifications. So notifications are, can be helpful. I know a lot of users like to have them. You can go and adjust in your user settings um, to get notifications. Uh, an example might be if you have three flag samples in a row, you can get a notification. Uh, there's a variety of other things that the system will notify you about. And the users have the option to select either email or the system-based. Uh, so that means the email will send your email address a notification whenever something happens. These might be every day whenever a sample is submitted. Um, so that can end up being quite a lot. So some users may prefer the system base to go on and see what the important things are right when they log in, uh, as we showed that notification screen a few slides ago. All right, so that's all we have here for our brief MITSPLAD intro today. So if there's any questions or if some of you are ready to get your logins to uh, get to using the system, um, I'd encourage you to start with talking to a company Plaid administrator. Um, every company will have an administrator for Plaid. Um, or if you need to, you can check with your VDOT Asphalt staff in the district and they will have a lot of knowledge about the MITS Plaid system. All right, have a great day.